Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and I'm going to be quickly showing you how to use our native transitions for Premiere Pro. Thankfully, these are really easy to use, so let's dive right into it. First of all, we're assuming you've downloaded some of our native drag and drop transitions for Premiere. If you haven't, we've actually got a video that walks you through that process. It's this one here, and you can find a link to it in the description below. Okay, so let's start by finding our transitions within the effects panel of our project. What I've already installed are our drag and drop shifter transitions. So I'm just going to go down to our video transitions folder and we can see that our downloaded transitions have their own unique folder. We have a list of different video transitions that each have their own title that can give you a bit of a general understanding of what they might do. Like this one for example, bounce. It'll likely give a bouncing motion as it goes through the transition. So to apply it as a transition between our clips, you can simply drag and drop it over top of the break between your clips and it works flawlessly automatically. But there's so much more that you can do with these than just using them in their default state. By highlighting your preset and then going up to effect controls, you can actually make a lot more adjustments. Depending on the different transitions in question, there will be a variety of different possible editing capabilities at your disposal, but we're going to walk you through just a few as an example. At the top here, you can see that there's a blue set of numbers for duration. Here you can manually key in the length of time you want the transition to last for. By default it's set for one second, but you can also click and drag these blue numbers to change it as a slider. This as a result will increase or decrease the amount of time the transition takes place over, making the process super slow or lightning fast. You also have alignment options, which will determine how the transition is placed over top of your video in relationship to the cutting point. Center at cut we'll place it halfway over top of each clip, with the cut in the middle, while start at cut and end at cut will do exactly what they describe, starting the transition at the cut or ending it there. To the right, you should see how your plugin is interacting with your footage. This transition, for example, is creating a flow from one piece of footage to the other. And if I change the label color for this piece of footage, it's easier to see what's what. You can see here that there's two things to take note of. A box which is the transition itself, and this line here which is the cutting point. Here you can change where the transition takes place between these two clips without interrupting the transition itself in any other way, just by clicking and dragging the box. Place it to start a little bit earlier, or to come in a little bit later. But you can also change the cut point itself by selecting this line here and pulling it to one side or the other. Great! And down here we can see that the parameters of the actual effect are able to be changed. We have the direction, which is right now set for left to right. And if we play our clip, we can see what that means. But there's also options for right to left, top to bottom, and bottom to top. And finally, the bounce amount is here, which is a value out of 100. Right now it's set to 30, which gives us this motion. But if we set it to 0, we can see that this parameter is taken away. There's actually no bounce now, and it just moves from left to right. But if we take it to 100, we can see that the described motion is a lot more violent. You can choose any number in this range to give the precise look that you want for the effect. And this goes for any of your other downloaded transitions as well. They'll all have features which you can play around with and try to use to produce their own unique results. We'll do just one more as an example. This stutter transition for example has a similar slider, and it's set to 20. But if we set it to something small like 5 for example, it's the same effect, but it looks totally unique compared to the default. Because there's exactly 5 iterations of this stutter effect happening. Neat, right? And if we set it down to 3, you can see how this changes the effect. So play around with your transitions and see all the different ways that you can create your own custom effects. And guys, that's just been a brief overview of how to use our shifter transition pack for Premiere Pro. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, as always, we have tons of other tutorials for After Effects, Premiere Pro, and even filmmaking in general. 
Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.